Alright boys and girls, today I want to talk about CB radios, the radios themselves, a little bit about the different kinds, kind of what to look for, um, just to give you an idea, all radios are not created equal, that's the bottom line. You can go into Walmart and buy a really small CB radio for $35, or you can go online or potentially to a truck stop and spend $200 on the standard CB radio. Um, as a typical, as a general rule, you are going to essentially get what you pay for. I personally would stay away from the real, real inexpensive radios. They tend not to have as good a filtering in them. They tend not to have the capability to modulate or swing as well as other larger chassis radios can. Uh, there are quite a few different manufacturers of radios, um, particularly in the mobile market. Uh, a mobile radio, if you do not know, is a radio that's designed to go in a vehicle. It's a radio that's designed not to be plugged into 110 volts inside of your house or your cabin or whatever. You have to have i.e. 12 volts DC like you have in a car to run it. Uh, one of the, the most important things that you can do with any radio is to find a good CB radio technician. Whether it's somebody online or if you're lucky enough to have a good technician in your area Try and get in good with these people, uh, get to know them, talk to people that have used them, and you can take your radios in and get them what's called a peak and tune, or an alignment, and what they do is they go into the guts of the radio and actually give you the maximum performance out of the radio that you can get. You can go so far as to have a variable power installed on the radio. Um where you can actually turn a knob and change your dead key from half a watt up to six, seven, eight watts, four watts, you know, whatever. And it is, it can be <clears throat> beneficial to be able to adjust your dead key lower if you get to the point where you want to run a linear amplifier. A linear amplifier is illegal to operate on CB band. Like I said in my previous video, 4 watts is the maximum legal limit. But I'll tell you what, if shit hit the fan, I really am not going to be too concerned about the FCC chasing me down to find out why or how I'm running 40 watts. Or what have you. I mean, bottom line is, the more power you put out, the better advantage you have, the better ability you have to be heard. It just, it, it just makes perfect sense. So, just a stock radio right out of the box for the most part on CBs, do, are, they perform at the bare minimum. I mean, 4 watts is a legal limit. I pulled CB radios out of the box, put them on the, on the table here, and they'll actually have like a 2.5 watt dead key. You know, that kind of stuff can be adjusted, but you have to know what you're doing when you get inside the radio to have it done. And there are an awful lot of hacks out there. You hear the guys at the truck stops on the CB saying, hey, you know, we do a peak and tune for $30, bring your radio by. We're sitting over here and they're working out of a maybe a, a small RV or a van or something like that, you know. Um, before you went and took your, your stuff to them, I would uh, try as, as best you can to make sure that they are a somewhat reputable um, operator. I know of guys personally that have taken radios into people like that and they say they're going to do this or that to it and they end up making the audio so horrible on it that it, it's almost impossible to understand what they're saying. The, the radio splatters extremely bad. And you don't want that. You, I mean, you want to get the, the most you can out of your radio, but for the most part, you want to try and keep your audio clean. Okay? 
That, that's about the biggest thing I can tell you about the radios in general. Uh, of course, the other kind of radio is you have a base station radio. These are radios that plug into your wall outlet. They're designed solely to be used inside your house, not inside of your vehicle or your RV or, or whatever. Well, your RV you can. I mean, you can get power in those. But uh, <clears throat> it's kind of the same, the same type deal. There's not near as many uh, CB radios on the market that, that are base stations, as we call them. Uh, you start getting into the export radios. Okay, an export radio is a is sold as a 10 meter export radio for like the 10 meter ham bands. But uh, a lot of those radios can be converted. I mean, they are built to where a technician can go inside that radio and do a conversion on them to allow you to get down to the CB frequencies. Okay, so the advantage of an export radio is, is out of the box, they have more features and they have more power. You know, right out of the box, many of these radios have variable power already on them and they might be variable from 2 watts to 10 watts or 12 watts on your dead key. Um, as a general rule, they can also be tuned up, peaked and tuned, whatever you want to call it, to perform quite a bit better than your standard CB radio. Okay. Uh, here again, you can own the radio, but if the radio does not have an FCC sticker on it, okay, meaning that that sticker implies that that radio meets all FCC regulations for operation on the airwaves in the United States. Now these radios are sold in this country and it's legal for them to sell them, it's legal for you to own them, but unless you are a licensed ham operator, you cannot operate those radios obviously on the ham bands. Okay, uh, I know that there are a group of people all over the country. I mean, you hear them all the time whenever the skip, the DX is rolling in and they operate on those radios routinely. Um, I truly do not feel, this is just my opinion, that you are going to have any trouble with anyone like the FCC unless they start getting complaints like from your neighbors or something like that. Saying that, you know, your radio is splattering on their antenna television and you know, whatever, just some kind of interference. So if you're operating out of your home, you do want to, you know, talk to your neighbors and, and ask them, say, hey, I'm, I'm putting up a base station and please, if I interfere with your whatever in your home in any way, please let me know, you know, and I'll do what I can to correct it. That's the proper way to approach that. I would not recommend <coughs> anyone going in and setting up your brand new base station and you go buy yourself a, <clears throat> a radio and you go buy yourself power supplies or you pony up the money to get a base station amplifier and you start pushing 2,000 watts out of your house. Not a good idea. Okay. This is, is, is primarily, you know, for, for shiz hits the fan. You know, if, if, if everything just starts to crumble and, uh, you know, communication is very valuable in everyday life between you and your boss, between you and your subordinates, you and your friends, you and your wife. You know, communication is everything. So, I mean, there are other options out there. I mean, you can buy linear amplifiers. You can buy all that kind of stuff. But uh, you can get yourself in trouble operating over the air with them, you know, if, if the FCC starts getting, you know, complaints from neighbors or what have you. If you run a clean station, every, all your equipment is set up right, right um, you shouldn't, for the most part, interfere with your neighbors at all. Uh, most everybody has got cable television. If you know of people real close to your home that are still on like a attic antenna or a roof antenna to get their TV, they're not on cable, they're not on satellite, well, you very well could interfere with them. But, you know, I, I would guess, you know, 98% of this country is on cable television or satellite now. 
Uh, the phones, the cordless phones have gone digital. Uh, the old analog cordless phones, sometimes CB radio would interfere with those. Be smart. That, that's the thing. You know, if you want to set up to get yourself a little bit more power, I would not recommend going and trying to, uh, you know, get 2,000 watts and talk on it routinely. You live out in the middle of BFE, well, you know, your chances are a lot better. You're not going to interfere with anyone, but you still want to, to be smart. But this is still, like I say, scenarios of, you know, the FCC could give a flying hoot about sea beers. You know, the FCC gets bored or they start getting a lot of complaints. That's when you're going to be looked at. That's my understanding anyway. So, uh, that's pretty much it. You have mobiles, you have bases, um, tune them up, export radios. Um, I've seen those like a CB, like I, I well, I don't, I didn't actually, well, yeah, I did show you in my previous video, I think. You know, I was keying 3 watts and swinging to 8, keying 3, swinging to 12, that type of thing. Export radios, they can go into them and tune them up, and you might be able to day key 2 watts and swing to 25 or 30. You know, they have bigger finals in them. Finals is your final transmit. That's what actually sends your signal out through your antenna. Um, some of them have dual finals. Some of the new MOSFET uh, radios. Uh, might have four finals in there, you know, and uh, they really have the capability to, to push out some wattage. But uh, I think that pretty much covers it <clears throat> on radio. Of course, a mobile radio, you have to get one chassis-wise that will, you know, fit your situation. If you can pretty much size is not an issue, I would go with uh, about the largest chassis-sized radio you can, you can fit. They tend they tend to have the ability to tune up a little bit better than the than the real small ones. They just have better circuitry in them, and they just flat just have the ability to do it. Now you can pick yourself up a Cobra 29. I think that they're running around 100 to 120 dollars, uh, or you can get yourself a, a Cobra 19, and those are running like 35 or 40 dollars, or a unit in 510. $35, $40, or small radios, they work, you know, they work, but they're not going to be your go-to radio if you really need to try and talk out 15, 20, 25, 30 miles. But let me say this, I'll do one on antennas and, and other stuff later. In your system, your antenna is 80% of it. Some people will say it's 90% of it. You can have yourself a $1,000 radio and you're trying to go out on a $50 antenna, it isn't going to work. Antenna quality and, and engineering is extremely, extremely important. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to cut that. Uh, just kind of covered some basic things about, about the radios themselves. We'll get into uh, microphones, power supplies, antennas, and stuff like that at a later time. Thanks for watching. Y'all take care. We'll see ya.